All right, we're going to string up a Wilson Pro Staff 97 LS. So that means it's the light version. That's what the L is, and the S means it's a spin effect racket. It has fewer crosses than it has mains. Whereas a conventional racket would always have more main, I'm sorry, more crosses than mains. So 16, 19, 18, 20, etc. So this particular racket has 18 mains and 16 crosses. So as I already mentioned, fewer crosses than mains, that's why it's spin effect. Um, means it'll need less string than a typical racket. The strings that are in here are obviously broken, but this is a little bit of an unusual racket, not because of the 16 crosses or that it's a spin effect racket, but it's an 18 main racket. And typically, if you have uh, 18 mains, you're almost always gonna have four holes four pairs of holes in the throat bridge, or eight holes total, which means your, your mains start at the head. So if there's eight holes in the throat, you always start your mains at the head, whether your racket has 16 mains or 18 mains. When you have 16 mains and you have eight holes down here, you're going to start your mains at the head and they will finish at the head. If you had six holes down here in the throat, your mains would start at the throat and if you have 16 mains, they'll end back at the throat. In other words, with 16 mains, you always end up back where you started. So if you start at the throat, you'll end up back at the throat and tie off the mains at the throat. Most rackets that have eight holes in the throat bridge, they all are gonna start at the head, and typically, they're going to, um, if it's a 16 main racket and it starts at the head, you'll end up back at the head and tie off the mains at the head. And most rackets that have 18 mains start at the head because they have eight holes in the throat, which means they end at the opposite end. 18 mains, you'll always end at the opposite end from which you start. So typically, an 18 main racket starts at the head and ends at the throat, so your mains get tied off down here at the throat somewhere. It's very unusual, this is one of the few rackets, where it has 18 mains yet does not have eight holes here in the throat bridge. It only has six like a lot of rackets that have 16 mains, will have just six holes and start here. So this racket has 18 mains. The mains start at the throat, yet end at the head. And so the mains get tied off at the head if you're stringing it two-piece, which the last time this was strung by someone else, you can see it was strung two-piece. And these last outer mains are actually traveling towards the head and get tied off here at, uh, I believe that's nine head on each side. And then there's the top cross tie off and the bottom cross was tied off down here. But it's just kind of an interesting thing to note because you won't come across a lot of rackets with 18 mains that start at the throat and therefore their mains end at the head. And this one does. So it's a little bit uh, unusual in that regard. So since these mains do end at the head, if you're not stringing it two piece, if you're going to string this one piece, which is what I'm going to do, uh, you don't need an around the world pattern. That's only for rackets where the mains end at the throat and would normally be tied off down here. So this racket is a perfect candidate for a one piece, natural one piece string job where the mains naturally end at the head and you can immediately go into doing the crosses. Now typically when you do a, a standard one piece job or a natural one piece job, you would string the short side, the short side main would come over and be tied off. You would string all of the uh, long side mains and this main that comes up would then transition to the top cross and then the second cross, third cross, and you would weave down the racket and finish. Which means that in the customary manner that you do a one-piece string job, a natural job, the strings that precede the tie-off would be the outer main on the short side, regardless of whether you put the short side on the left or the right. I tend to always, almost always, put my short side on the left. So let's pretend this was the short side and this main comes up. You would typically, in a customary manner, tie off that main. So that main's gonna have a little bit of a tension loss because it's the last string that was pulled preceding the knot. Whereas the other main, which immediately transitioned into a cross, didn't have a knot tied. So it would have full reference tension on it, just like all the other mains would, except for this one. And then you would weave all of the crosses and you would tension the bottom cross and tie it off. So the last two strings that precede a tie off is only one of the outer mains, whichever side was your short side, and the bottom cross. A lot of people, including myself, when they do a one-piece string job, 
they try to not have one of the mains tied off, if, if possible. And you have to pay attention to your transitions from your crosses to your mains, your mains to your crosses to make sure that you're not going over a tiny little amount of graphite to support that transition. And this racket has plenty of room on the transitions, but what I'm going to do is string this one piece, but rather than the short side doing only the short side, my short side will be slightly longer because I will also incorporate the top cross. So the short side will do all nine mains on the short side, then transition to the top cross, which will come over and be tied off up here. The long side will do all the mains on the long side and transition to the second cross, going this way, and then finish all of the remaining crosses and tie off the bottom one. And what this means is this main over here on my short side does not proceed a tie off. The top cross does. So the only two strings that proceed a tie off the way I'm going to do it will be the top cross and the bottom cross. In other words, the only two strings that will be subjected to a small tension loss will be the upper or the, the top cross and the bottom cross, which shouldn't matter because you're not really hitting the ball down there anyway. And it preserves the perfect reference tension on all of the mains rather than all of them but one. <clears throat> so this racket is perfectly suited for incorporating the top cross into the short side and just letting the long side transition into the second cross. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So right now there's a knot here and here where the mains are tied off. This is where the top cross is tied off in this two-piece job. And this is where the knot is down here for the bottom cross currently. The way when I'm done stringing, you'll see that the, the knot will be here because the short side will go across the top and then be tied off here. So there'll be a knot here in the very same spot there's a knot right now. So I won't be damaging yet another grommet. I'll be putting the knot in the very same place that this one was. And then the long side will do all of the remaining crosses and will be tied off down here in this corner. The knots will be on opposite. Uh, hemispheres or halves of the racket. Now, if you put your short side over here and incorporate the top cross, you'd have a knot on this uh, side of the, the top of the hoop and you'd have a, a knot down here. So they're, they're going to be di uh, diagonal from one another. Um, and This has synthetic gut in it. We're just going to replace it with synthetic gut. Uh, print synthetic gut with Duraflex 16 gauge at 55 pounds, which is mid-tension for this racket. Um, so let me get the strings cut out. Oh, the bumper guard is really worn on this thing and I already contacted the owner. So I have a grommet set, which includes the bumper guard. The rest of the grommets are in good shape on this racket, so I don't really need to rip all of those out unnecessarily. Um, of course, the bumper guard, when you, when you purchase this, this thing is absolutely straight. Um, I've already pre-bent this. I warmed this up on the stove in a, in a pot of warm water. Um, if you're interested in seeing that whole process, I have a whole other video documenting all of that, how to replace a bumper guard and grommets and how I go about heating them up in water. Some people will use a heat gun, etc. So this has already been warmed up and bent uh, so that it won't have those buckles. Uh, watch my other video and you'll see what I'm talking about, the buckles. So this is going to conform and, and, and fit very, very nicely. So let me get the strings cut out of here, get this old bumper guard taken off, put this fresh bumper guard on, mount it up, and we'll get this thing strong. So we'll be back in just a second.